I'm Steve Wolf from Government.com, the best source for coins worldwide. In this episode of our ongoing conversation with Edmund Moy, John Mercanti, and Miles Standish, we asked Mr. Moy about the U.S. Mint's groundbreaking Platinum Eagle program. Now, as more and more countries began offering platinum bullion coins, um, Congress felt that the Mint ought to have that same authority to stay competitive. But they knew that based on worldwide sales of platinum bullion coins, this was going to be a limited market. Uh, it, not as big as gold or silver, uh, but still bigger than palladium, which is the other uh, bullion coin. And so Congress then, knowing that it was going to be a smaller market, wanted to give the Mint flexibility on its design, knowing A, it wouldn't affect that many people, and B, uh, uh, it would give the Mint more uh, marketing hooks to promote uh, that bullion coin. And so with that, uh, it was a wonderful place for the Mint to experiment then on creating uh, all these uh, various designs. And so uh, collaboratively, uh, we work within the Mint to figure out different themes. And that theme will run a series. Uh, and then uh, uh, coins are then created to uh, embody that series. And so John's been instrumental uh, with that uh, since the creation of the program. And now we've seen it go through several different themes. Uh, and then went uh, recently into hiatus, just because at the height of the financial crisis, there was very little demand for platinum bullion. Again, because it's just not a worldwide uh, market. But with the um, uh, increased crisis now in Ukraine and uh, Russia producing 40% of the world's uh, platinum, uh, that supply could be under constraint. Uh, South Africa uh, produces another 30% of the world's platinum. They've been under um, uh, some strikes uh, that have uh, uh, lessened supply. All those factors have now increased demand for uh, platinum uh, coins and the mint uh, this year uh, has then decided to uh, go ahead and uh, restart that program. And their first month was a big success. They came out with 10,000 coins and all sold out uh, within that first month. John Mercanti designed the spectacular obverse design for the U.S. Platinum Eagle, pulling off an incredible artistic coup by presenting the face of the Statue of Liberty full on, which is an incredibly difficult artistic feat. We asked John to share the story behind his dramatic design for the first ever U.S. Platinum Series. It gives you a lot of flexibility. The obverse, I, when I develop the obverse, I, I think of the nomination when I design a coin. Uh, I always think of the size of the coin. Um, and I knew that was going from a one, one ounce to a one tenth ounce. So um, standard full length statue is not going to work at one tenth ounce. It's going to be very hard to see, very hard to reproduce. Because we didn't, we didn't have the tools at that time. We weren't into digital technology. The, the tool, the, the, the width of the tool was, su was such that it wasn't going to give a, a crisp, clear image at that, at that denomination, one-tenth ounce. So I, I did typically, as I said uh, earlier today, I, I zoomed in and I zoomed in on her face to get the closest view of the statue so that when I get down at one-tenth, I know exactly who it is. So in my mind, I'm, uh, I'm at the one ounce, but ideally, I'm at the tenth ounce because that's where that's where my uh, uh, most people are going to buy that, that that could afford it. A lot of people uh, buy the one tenth ounce as opposed to buying the one ounce, of course, because it's a lot less inexpensive, less, less expensive. So I wanted I wanted that to kick at that le at that at that uh, size. So that's what I did. I, I zoomed in and I, I I took her whole head and uh, the rays coming out from her head. But I had to feminize her a little bit because. Uh, uh, powers that be didn't think that we could sell her the way she really is. And she is very stern, incre incredibly stern. Uh, maybe too much, literally. So we, we, we softened her and we, we uh, worked her neck to, to, as I said, to feminize her. And, and she, looks, she looks good. And she served, a, she served us well. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that John is uh, underestimating um, of what his contribution was, was when you uh, take a look at this uh, uh, coin because not only was it going to be a uh, collector's proof version, mm -hmm. but because it was going to be a bullion version at various denominations, mm -hmm. including a one tenth ounce, that gets pretty small because it's yeah. the size of a penny. And you have to be worried about how that design is going to come out. And John's design uh, not only uh, fit that, 
but it was a full um, uh, frontal uh, of Liberty's face. And uh, it's a lot easier to do a profile, which is why it's on most coins, a lot more difficult to do a full uh, you know, face on. And John was able to do that with uh, uh, Liberty, which is uh, among artists. One of the most challenging things to do is to do that uh, uh, face portrait uh, done really well so it comes out recognizable. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he did on, on, on the coin.